this is literally how muscles work. Trust me. Morning freaks. Now today we're going so deep on a singular topic. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but have you ever thought about how muscles actually work? You probably think, oh, well, basically you move and then they get shorter and longer. And that's probably where your brain has stopped. But today our brain is not stopping there. We're going so deep on this topic. It's going to be insane. You're going to be that smug asshole at parties that just knows everything. Everyone's going to think you're so smart. Let's get it. All right, we're gonna have to be quick because it's definitely going to rain. Okay, so before we go super deep on this, let's first talk about the basic structure and how a brain innovates a muscle to move. So you make a decision in your brain to move a muscle. And so nerve impulses or what we call action potentials start in your brain, move down the spinal cord into the peripheral nervous system, which is outside of the spinal cord, and then goes into the specific muscle that you're trying to move. Now the structure of a muscle is pretty interesting. There's like these long units of many different fiber types ranging from fibers that help you to run slow, fibers that help you to run fast, all in one big unit, okay? Okay, so really quickly, it starts in the motor cortex of the brain. It goes down into the spinal cord, which goes down to the spinal level that innovates the specific muscle that you're trying to actually move. Then it goes into the peripheral system. So we get to the muscle unit, which has a big bundle of different muscular fibers, okay? And then we have each fiber itself. And so generally speaking, the higher of an impulse that gets put into that muscle, the more fibers are actually gonna be able to contract at the same time. And so more fiber units that contract, more power, more force, more speed, bigger stimulus, amazing stuff. And then we get movement, which is pretty cool, but it gets even more complex than this. And I'm gonna explain the next level of complexity after I go to the Damn dentist, God. Tires yesterday, dentist today. What an expensive week. Oh, that was a big waste of time, but I did get some dates for lunch because dates equal fitness. My ADHD brain is telling me that I need to drive up this ramp. It's a ramp. Okay, so how do we determine what energy is being used for which kind of muscular contraction? Well, we have to talk about oxygen because oxygen is very, very important. So we start at the top here with food and food gives us glucose and then pyruvate via glycolysis. Now there are other processes that get fat and proteins and drag them into this same cycle, but it doesn't really matter for this video because it's all about creating acetyl-CoA. Now, all of this acetyl-CoA just gets shoved into the citric acid cycle. Now, the citric acid cycle is like this really complex energy production system where it's transferring different carbon atoms and hydrogens and using water to actually create more energy that can be utilized by the body. And then the byproducts of this citric acid cycle power the electron transfer chain, which is like this industrial nuclear power plant of ATP, which is our energy utilization product, basically. Okay, so we have these two different mechanisms in which to create energy for these muscles to actually contract, okay? Now, these faster acting ones have a lot more what we call glycolytic enzymes, and they are enzymes that are designed to get this anaerobic system to be really fast, okay? The slower twitch fibers have more oxidating oxidative oxidative enzymes which utilize the mitochondria to 
upregulate that citric acid cycle and the electron transfer chain. So if we start with efforts from 10 seconds up to say one minute, that is gonna be really relying on those enzymes that create really fast contractions in the higher levels of that energy system, okay? So they're gonna be requiring more glycolytic enzymes to fire through that glycolysis process as fast as possible. Anything longer than that, say for example, we have a 20 minute all out effort, that is gonna be much more aerobic, even though it feels really, really hard. There's gonna be a big element of that, probably like a 98% of that is gonna be coming from these aerobic enzymes compared to the glycolytic enzymes. Um, I can't really write straight. <laughs> Whereas if you do something like a lower intensity level, that's going to rely on the same processes of the citric acid cycle and the electron transfer chain, but it will utilize much less carbohydrates and much more fat, even though we're still using oxidative enzymes. Does that make sense? That is stage two of this video. We still got one more stage to go where we're really going to nut down on what actually is going on in this muscle because it's so fascinating for me at least <laughs> all right now i guess one thing to understand about muscular fibers is that there isn't just a slow twitch and a fast twitch muscle fiber there's like a continuum from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other in every single muscular unit so pretty much whatever kind of activity you're doing whatever fiber it matches up with like it's going to be there it's not going to be strictly slow twitch and fast there's going to be intermediates that are a little bit more glycolytic than like an oxidative fiber. And then there's going to be other ones that are the complete opposite. And they're going to be a nice spectrum all the way through. How good is physiology? Okay, on to the next one. Okay, so on to level three, and this time we're gonna go even deeper. So we finished off with that muscle fiber. And if we looked at this structure under a microscope, we would see that it's like these little compartments that are stacked on top of each other over and over. This is called a sarcomere. A sarcomere is made up of two different protein strands, actin and myosin. So actin is the thinner strands. They're the orange ones, the ones on the outside. Myosin, which is the one that we really like in this video, is the blue one on the inside. Now, if we have a look at this myosin structure, we can see that it has two little legs that kind of stick out. These are the, called the myosin heads. And now we're getting to the good part. So how do these muscles actually contract? Well, in step one, this myosin head binds to actin. Okay, so in step two, we use that energy that we've produced through our metabolic processes to bend the head of the myosin. And because this myosin is attached to the actin, this bending actually moves them both closer to each other. And then in the third step, what happens is one of these myosin heads detaches and the other one attaches further up that actin strand. So what we end up seeing is that they work together to walk themselves all the way along this actin strand. It's literally running along the actin strand. Mind blown. I'll see you guys tomorrow.